Please repeat after me. Pa, pa, pa. Pa, pa, pa. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 pa. Congratulations, you just sang a segment from Mozart's The Magic Flute. Aren't you talented? <laughs> Are you aware of the incredible process that your brain just went through in those first few moments? Did you know that in that seemingly very simple interaction of me singing and you responding, that your brain used so many areas all at once? MRI studies of the brain have shown that listening to music and singing activates multiple centers in your brain. In particular, it activates the areas responsible for attention, memory, expectation and rules, language, and emotion. And these are the same areas that we use when we're learning to listen and speak. These are the areas of the brain that are fundamental to human communication. Music is fundamental. When I sang to you, I sent a signal through the air that got to your brain via your ears or maybe a device. And once it was there, it was broken down into its many different parts. Pitch, timing, volume, sound quality, speech sounds, and then it was reassembled in your brain and given a meaning. You may not have known it was Mozart. You then used your working memory to store this musical information before your brain broke it down again and sent messages to your body to allow you to sing it back to me, at which time your ears heard the signal of your own voice and started the whole intricate process yet again. You used your whole brain to listen and experience music. As we say at the Shepherd Centre, you took your brain to the listening gym. At the Shepherd Centre, we often child offer children with hearing loss and their families a music therapy group so they can access and participate in the phenomenon that is music. So they can use their whole brains to listen in a fun and playful environment. And we know that children with hearing loss need many, many more opportunities to practice their listening than children with typical hearing. We know that listening is still effortful for them. And we know from the science that I mentioned at the start that participating in these music groups exercises their attention, their memory, their sense of rules, their language, and their emotion. And this last point is particularly salient, emotion. Music isn't just a brain workout, it's a means of fostering and nurturing emotional well-being and human connection. Music is fundamental. I work at the Liverpool Shepherd Centre and last year we had a new family join our service. Sonia is a single mother who had been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. She came to our centre seeking support for her two-year-old daughter, Michaela. As well as facing her own immense health challenges, Sonia was having difficulty overcoming her grief at having a child diagnosed with permanent hearing loss in both ears, something Anne touched on before. This parental grief is common in varying extents with all of the families that we see. And for Sonia and Michaela, we could see they were having a hard time forming a secure, warm bond. And at the Shepherd Centre, we know that this connection is the initial building block for all speech and language acquisition. And our team were very concerned to see that in the case of Michaela and Sonia, they hadn't fully developed this connection. They came to our music group. And there, they listened with their whole brains. They used their attention, their memory, their sense of order, their language skills. And they fostered an incredible emotional bond. They developed their bond as mother and child. They came to that group every week for eight weeks. They delighted in each other, singing together, playing games, making music and living the phenomenon that is music. They made strong connections with other families through music. At the beginning of the group, Michaela showed very limited facial expression and appeared to be socially withdrawn and reluctant to speak. Likewise, at the beginning of the group, Sonia seemed very overwhelmed and consumed by her grief. But by the end of the group, we saw these two ladies smiling at each other, embracing, 
singing together, talking. And at this time, I was seeing Michaela for weekly speech therapy, and I know that there is no way that I could have achieved this outcome for this family through therapy alone. Music really is fundamental. Not only does it grow the listening brain, but it has the power to heal relationships, foster community, and foster joy in families. Michaela has come on in leaps and bounds in the last two years. When I spoke to Sonia last week, she said she was so delighted that she's Michaela's mum. She's so enjoying watching her grow into a special, feisty, very, very talkative little girl. We want to be able to provide this opportunity to every single family that comes to our service, and that's where you come in. If we're lucky enough to raise $25,000 tonight, we will be able to run music group programs across our five centres. We will be able to help more families like Michaela and Sonia. In simple numbers, every $180 you raise here tonight will allow another child in their family to access our music program. Music is fundamental to the learning and brain development of children with permanent hearing loss. And with your help, we can continue to provide music groups to these children and their families, just like we did for Michaela and Sonia. You can help them to sing their own song and dance to their own tune, and maybe it will even be Mozart. Thank you.